All right, so we're in the Meteora region of Greece, and Meteora is known for these monasteries that are built on these huge rock outcroppings, and you can probably see one in the distance. And we spent all yesterday going on to about three of these this morning hiking. And one of the themes of this trip that has emerged everywhere we've gone is the theme of the ascent. And we saw it first in Athens where to go up to the Acropolis, you had to walk a sacred path. And this path was actually called the Peripatos or something like that. And Peripateo in the New Testament just means to walk. And Paul uses it to describe the Christian life. The Christian walk, uh, the Christian life is actually just a walk. <laughs> well, so, I, think, I think, yeah, I think that the idea that we view it in the West as a walk, like a stroll. We've been hiking all morning and sometimes the sun's on us and sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down and we sort of uh, do, <laughs> I guess we take a hiking analogy and say, yeah, man, that's life. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes it's bad. But, you know, it's like we said, we've said it over and over again, this idea of, no, 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 it's an ascent and it's intentional. And uh, over and over, these, these, these temples are built this way. You know, we saw it first in, at the Acropolis. We went to uh, Delphi, which was Temple to Apollo. It's that same thing. And it's just funny that over and over we've said, you know, here's this ascent again, this idea that... that uh, it's, it's very intentional to build it this way. These, these monasteries, how can you not stand in awe as you approach it? And, uh, you know, there's just no way to climb these steps and then, and then just sort of get up there and screw around and, and talk a bunch of stupid nonsense. And, you know what I mean? It's like you're in a frame of mind yeah. even all these centuries later, you know, and it's just kind of fascinating to see that, that play out over and over again. Yeah, so in Athens, we saw the... Peripatos, the sacred way, in Delphi we saw the sacred way, and I mean, you know, those are, you could say those are pagan structures, but then you get here to Meteora, and we walked 150, 200 flights of stairs to get to the tops of these things, and it's the same thing. It's this idea that the, the ascent itself prepares you for entering the sacred space you're about to enter, Right, and it would be completely different and, you know, sometimes we see this in our culture today, that you rush off to church, you go through Starbucks, you run in the building, and then you expect to encounter the holy, but there has been no ascent yeah. in our modern life. Yeah, no preparation. And it's funny, you know, uh, us going to church as kids. I remember mom playing Christian music on the radio. And it's funny because all, even something that simple is, is trying to capture, oh, hey, let's prepare for this. You know, and so that was going to yeah. be one of the questions I asked you. It's like, well, uh, we're not building a monastery in, in uh, you know, in the States up in the Rocky Mountains somewhere. There probably is one. But uh, how did how did you know, how does a small town church uh, like where from I, I'm from or where you're from? How did they capture the idea of ascent? Obviously, without building these <laughs> these structures that you have to climb to, you know? Well, some of it I would think is still found in before automobiles, you know, the walk, you walked 10 to 15 minutes. And there again, it's, it's that idea in the New Testament again of, of walking. Walking was part of getting and preparing yourself for where you're going next. But yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's one of the questions I've been wrestling, you know, thinking about like, how do you, how do you bring back the ascent when our churches are convenient. We have automobiles to get there as fast as we can. It's not necessarily, uh, maybe it is taking a walk, <laughs> but maybe it's something else. Like you said, maybe it's listening to music. Maybe it's doing, creating some kind of space, whatever it is that starts to, I like the figure of the ascent because you also rise above the mundane. And we saw this at the Acropolis, Yeah. right? That the everyday world was down there and you had to make your way up to the holy. And so there was this process of leaving behind, you know, noise and uh, job. Yeah, the animals. Task, the, yeah. yeah, errands to run, what I'm gonna eat for lunch. There was a process of leaving all that behind. Yeah, yeah, and, and rising up to it. And we even talked about how, <laughs> how you can, uh, the, the piety, which, which we look at as a negative thing, you know, sort of a pious priest. 
but we were standing up there commenting. It's like, man, how are you not pious? Looking down, <laughs> looking down at the at, at at the time, animals in the street and people buying and selling and running around doing their doing their daily activities, and you're up on this temple mount that you can see for uh, maybe a hundred miles, but definitely <laughs> dozens of miles. You know, it's just amazing how far you can see and how yeah how that also can get into your psyche and sort of say uh, to 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 take a negative, maybe a negative approach to it how that gets in your psyche and say, yeah, I was created for this. I was created to be, to be up here and those are down yeah, there and yeah. we're up here. And sort of that whole separation of priesthood and laity that, that, uh, that, well, that in the West or in modern churches, we've definitely tried to get away from. Yeah. And that's another thing we talked about that I think kind of ties into the whole, um, what do modern churches do? And we had discussed one of the, one of the, I, and I won't say a mistake, but one of the some people have called it a mistake is is the seeker friendly churches of hey man, you know if you want jeans, if you want to wear a ball cap into church, um, come on, come as you are. And there's a need for that, but yeah. we've also seen that that went too far. And you made the comment I thought that was great about the whole our stadium churches now are like stadiums. You know the the priest is or the pastor is down there on the stage we're up above him and there's actually yeah. a proximity mindset that gets in our minds that really is reflective of the church today of like uh nobody would consciously say this but we're higher than you you, you know our ties pay your salary yeah. um you know and and yeah. and that consumerist mindset that we have in church and how there are no other the theaters are that way uh the, you know the, the but the temples are all the priest is up high, the priest sure. is elevated, sure. and we're down here, and we're looking to him, we're, we're, our gaze is forced yeah. upward, and, and the ideal is sitting in front of us, and that's what we're supposed to strive and achieve for. And even in the chapels that we've been in, in a Greek Orthodox monastery, the picture or the icons of Jesus and the disciple are even above the priest, and then if you look in the very top of the dome, you see this beautiful icon of of Jesus, and it's all designed to make you lift your eyes up, up. Everything is up. Yeah, force your gaze up. Uh, and yeah, there's something about how do we capture that? How do we recapture that without redesigning buildings and everything like that? But how do we get the idea that we're ascending to a holy spot? We have to look upward. We have to leave all the mundane behind because we have to prepare ourselves for the holy. And then, of course, as just as we were talking, the flip side of that is, you know, every ascent is there's a descent, which is, okay, how am I, I guess, how am I changed going back? Right. How do I take, take my ascent back to my mundane life and yeah. the people I come in, in contact with every yeah. day and things like that? And how do I bring that back? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, we've, I think we've lost that. And, I don't, and you're right, I don't know what the answer is. But one of the things that absolutely clear is the more we go around and look at it, the more you see that that is built in it's, <laughs> the system, the built in, built in the structure of the culture of, of ancient, <laughs> ancient church life or ancient, uh, uh, yeah. ancient spirituality. Yeah. You know? Whether it's a pagan temple or a monastery, everything about the ancient world, they understood that they were preparing you to go to a holy place. And that was nothing that they took lightly. Yeah. In fact, one of the stories, we heard at Delphi is that one of the emperors of Rome came to visit the Oracle of Delphi. And we were joking, I don't know if it was a story, we were joking that, uh, you know, there might have been a tendency to say, have the Oracle come down to see me. And that was absolutely not, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> King or not. Yeah. You have to make the ascent. You have to make the ascent to the Oracle because what you were about to experience went beyond just uh, your position as emperor and an empire. You were entering sacred space. And we see that, yeah, we've seen it everywhere on this trip. Yeah, and one last thing, because we probably should have said it earlier, but one thing that was real obvious at Delphi was the intentionality of every step. There were certain, there were certain uh, 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 statues, there were certain plaques, references that you could tell uh, were elevated as you elevated. So at the bottom, there would be things, there'd be plaques and references to kind of, let's say, earthly conquer, you know, earthly battles of, hey, do you remember when we, you know, when we, when our team beat their team doing this, you know, it was kind of, they, they were, there were things to be looked up to, but they weren't, they weren't divine. 
you know, and then and then as you as you kind of went up the road, uh, then you saw these these icons that were elevated, that were more eternal. We saw how many times the pedestals <clears throat> that were, ah, what, 30, 40 feet? Yeah. Uh, you know, of marble or bronze, and and the idea is to look up and to see, in this case, the the Greek Sphinx or the three ladies uh, or the uh, what the 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 tri-headed serpent or you know. It's that same thing of, of looking up, and they were all had an eternal significance to, uh, tied to them. But yeah, mm -hmm. that road going up, that was very intentional. I noticed that, that uh, it was, yeah, it just continued to elevate as you climbed. You're like, oh, wow, we're not, we're past the wars. We're past all the sort of the uh, petty uh, uh, winds that we've had in, in our society, and, and now we're approaching the divine, clearly, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been it's been neat, and it, and you can't get it out of your head. And once you see it, it's like once uh, once we noticed it, it was in Athens. We've said it over and over. Oh, you see here it we go. everywhere. Here's the ascent. You see it everywhere. <laughs> we talk about it every time. Here's the ascent. We're preparing ourselves for something special, something sacred when we get to the top of this. So we're about halfway through our trip. Those are our thoughts. If we uh, maybe we'll do another one if we reach any conclusion. I'm afraid we started with the best. How do you how do you beat this? As, as we were setting up the camera, I'm like, this is going to be our first podcast. You know, how, you know you're know, you thinking, well, hey, the next one's going to be better than this. Yeah, no, it's not. The view is not going to be. Maybe the thoughts are. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, how do you beat this? 